Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. An extreme rally is ahead for cryptocurrencies. This is a comment being put forth by a top trader and courtesy of XRP Crypto Wolf here on Twitter. So what does this mean, guys? What does this really mean? According to analyst Henrik Zeberg, the cryptocurrency market could see an extreme rally. The sentiment is going to become extremely bullish closer to the blow off top of this cycle. So Zeberg expects US stocks to reach their peak in the second half of 2024. The analyst expects the recession to start in the last quarter of the year, which will prompt a fast decline in the markets. And uh, Tom Lee also did comment on this. He is head of research at Fundstrat. He recently predicted that inflation would see a dramatic decline in the second half of the year. He expects the leading cryptocurrency, namely Bitcoin, to reach $150,000 by 2024. So that is, uh, I guess, the target goal for Bitcoin by the end of 2024, guys, which is only uh, how many months away? June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So seven months until we see these price targets. Now, Hendrik Zeberg, he said this, okay, blow off top is not over and done yet. And I tend to agree, you know, just taking a look at the Bitcoin chart, we are only halfway there. I mean, technically the halving is uh, in and around roughly approximately the halfway period between the bottom of the market and the top of the market. So we are seeing what is typically known as the uh, post halving retrace, which uh, has been going along as planned, like clockwork. Okay, the retrace, uh, 25, 30%, whatever it ended up being here. Uh, let's see, uh, 22%, so not even 25% really. So this next push to the upside uh, is really where the excitement is going to be. Sentiment will become extremely bullish, okay? Uh, and then he says, I will be called a perma bear as I call the US stock market top. The market top is very close in outside the US. Bulls will point to AI and Fed liquidity to explain why markets can only go up. But the top of U.S. markets, that will be in quarter three and quarter four of 2024. And then the recession will start in quarter four of 2024. So looking at uh, more of a macro picture here, guys, take a look at the S&P 500. So we thought that, you know, maybe we were going to see this thing teetering and coming crashing back down, right? Because at this point here, we were at the top. Were we at the top here? This was the crash of 2008. Okay. And where were we for the S&P 500? Actually, no, we had surpassed that Fibonacci. We had actually surpassed it. So getting up past the Fib, you know, we were thinking to ourselves, okay, is this the end? Came back down and guys, look, it keeps pushing higher. Uh, what if I were to line that up with the 0.786 there? Uh, you guys can see. If I were to line it up to the 0.786, there is still some room to move here. Uh, up another 10, 6, 7%. I mean, this thing can't go on forever. And, uh, you know, that is exactly what uh, Hendrik Zeberg is saying here. So will the markets crash and will crypto move along down with it? The good news, guys, cryptocurrency is still poised and ready to move up. Again, right now, the market cap is only at about $2.235 trillion. And that is uh, very, very close to where we saw it at its all-time high back in 2021. It's only about 34% off its all-time high. So guys, there is still a lot more room to grow. And with growth in the spec market, there's also the utility side of things too. XRP Healthcare bringing this up, they are thrilled to announce that they have received trademark registration success in Uganda, marking a significant milestone in their commitment to revolutionize healthcare in the region. And so uh, here's an article just outlining that. Concurrently, the company underscores its unwavering dedication to self-reliance by discontinuing its collaboration with any third parties, thus emphasizing its resolve to drive forward under its own stewardship. The registration of the XRP healthcare trademark serves as a necessary prerequisite for the company to create its brand of pharmacies, medical centers, and hospitals in Uganda. This strategic move underscores XRP healthcare's commitment to not only expand its footprint, but also to enhance the quality and accessibility of healthcare services through its proprietary establishment. Establishments. This intentional maneuver is indicative of XRP Healthcare's steadfast focus on establishing a robust presence in Uganda's healthcare landscape, underpinned by a vision to enhance access to quality medical services across the nation. By fortifying its trademark rights, XRP Healthcare reaffirms its dedication to fostering trust, reliability, and excellence in healthcare, delivering through its brand and the ability to grow exponentially. So that is exactly what we're eyeing here. Um, you know, a lot of these XRPL-related projects, a lot of them are still in their infancy. Uh, 
really trying to get their foothold, I guess, in their industry of choice, making a name for themselves. And XRP Healthcare has been doing just that, uh, continuing to grow as we're seeing here. Uh, they've just got a trademark registration in Uganda. So that is all very, very positive news. So that is going to help with the utility aspect. And I think overall, that is what's going to uh, get cryptocurrencies with real world utility continue to move up, even if we do see a recession, even if we do see a downturn on the speculative side of the crypto market. Uh, and you know, as I see it, um, XRP is poised to surpass all time high in this bull run. For more of my insight on what I think is going to happen this bull run, you can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel. It is only $5 a month. I purposely kept it affordable, guys, so you can follow me throughout this bull run. Utility is going to play a large role in cryptocurrencies like XRP, but we're also focusing on, uh, you know, the ebbs and flows of the market, what the macro picture is, and how this will affect uh, other industries, including the crypto space. Now, Black Swan capitalist Versan here, he posted this, the shift towards hard asset signals a monumental change in the financial landscape. He just recently interviewed Butler Gold Arivo here uh, on his YouTube channel. I will link this in the description, guys. I urge you to watch the interview, but I just wanted to play a little clip here. Listen to this. That if you combine the lessons of economic history with the core tenets of game theory and applied those to contemporary monetary developments, international monetary developments, they were leading us back to a gold standard. And so I came up with this concept of what I call the monetary cycle of history from good money, bad money, and back to good money again. That's clearly what's going on. I'm, I'm absolutely convinced now uh, that we are in this phase now of the monetary cycle of history where this very, very unusual, unipolar, unbacked dollar reserve currency that's being abused by the authorities is leading back to a global gold standard. We're, we're going to get there. Back to the gold standard. I mean, Donald Trump has been saying this, uh, you know, sound money is quintessential, a cornerstone of uh, the U.S. economy. And getting back to a gold standard, I mean, Judy Shelton was on his team back when he was president, and she is very bullish on gold, too. So, I mean... If we do see, I mean, as we're seeing the U.S. dollar collapse in terms of dominance, um, how soon are we going to see this kind of shift, right? This is the question on everybody's mind. Um, and I think definitely it's going to be ushered in with more cryptocurrency utility. So definitely XRP, XLM, stablecoins on the rise and the likelihood of them being backed by gold and other assets means the days of the U.S. dollar's reserve status are are numbered. So wanted to thank Black Swan Capitalist. And again, guys, I urge you to watch this interview here. Again, I will link this in the description of this video for you. Now, speaking of this, you don't think they have this all sorted out behind the scenes? The FBI warns Americans against using cryptocurrency money transmitting services that are not registered as money service businesses. So this is uh, the abbreviation for that is the MSBA. And this one was courtesy of Ito Farina here. But check this out, guys. Ripple is an MSBA member and they have been for a very long time. So this was the uh, official warning from back uh, just a couple of weeks ago from April 25th, 2024. The FBI warns Americans against using cryptocurrency money transmitting services that are not registered, so not registered with the MSB. And yet, here we have it, guys. Ripple, new member. As of October 2nd, 2019, the MSBA is excited to welcome its newest member, Ripple. So these money transmitter licenses that Ripple has been acquiring in the United States uh, over 2021 and 22 and 23 and 24, why? Why was it such a big question then? Whether it was fine for Ripple to conduct business in the United States or not, they're already a member of the MSBA. Things that make you go, hmm. Oh, oh, and did you notice this from King Karen here? Ripple has 589 employee contracts. No, I'm not making this up, guys. This is directly from their website here. 589 contracts here for people that work at the organization. Another thing that gets me wondering, well, I mean, Brad Garlinghouse is in the know. Wow, almost at 800,000 followers too. Congrats, Brad. You know, when I see these riddles, it does tickle a little something. It piques my curiosity. I knows nothing here posting this. Anybody ever notice the code in the sky in the riddle pick? Now, guys, remember this riddle from back in April of 2020. A lot of this we have already decoded, or at least we think we have a pretty good grasp on the decode of the ship riddle uh, from all the way back then. But did you guys notice that there was a, another code here in the clouds in the sky? Yeah, that's right. And apparently uh, it reads out XWV4 at H, uh, H, excuse me, colon SGBK. 
things that make you go, hmm, now this is a very obscure code here. Uh, somebody took it upon themselves to do a bit of a Google search. And uh, when you do a Google search, obviously the, uh, the bearable guy riddle does come up. But guys, you know what else comes up? A couple of SEC websites as well. So when you click on those, here's what you find. Harvest Capital Credit Corp. Okay, uh, it looks like an SEC document, maybe some back end information that uh, has been encoded, encrypted. I don't know, I guess <clears throat> maybe part of a website, but there's some addresses here, their business address, mailing address in New York City. Um, but Harvest Capital Credit Corp and guys, the second one over here brings us to this Morgan Stanley Security Brokers Dealers and flotations company. And again, uh, just a, a page full of code, all this uh, kind of computer code, I guess, back end stuff. So what could this possibly mean? Are these companies connected in some way to some future Ripple deals, at least as of April 2020, that we may not have heard of yet? Uh, when I did take a quick look for a uh, current Morgan Stanley Ripple partnership, I could not find anything. Now, I could be mistaken on this because for whatever reason, I do feel like I have heard some information and even reported on information in the past where there was a connection between Morgan Stanley and uh, Ripple. I mean, that does sound very clear. Uh, here, I just happened to see this article. Uh, this is kind of the only thing I, I could find. Morgan Stanley veteran calls XRP a clear leader in the cross-border space, uh, says Bitcoin and crypto portfolios offer unique chance to earn 100x. So this was just a comment from uh, someone who used to work at Morgan Stanley, Zoe Cruz, um, but nothing current, no, um, no partnerships that I have heard of as of late. The other thing I wanted to look up was Harvest Capital Credit Corp. Uh, and when you look them up, guys, what comes up is Portman Ridge. Now, Portman Ridge uh, looks like there was a merger here. If I click on this, I think there was, uh, was it this one? No, it was not that one. It was, could it have been this one here? I think they're, uh, they merged with uh, another company and that would have been the Harvest Credit Company. So that is pretty much all I could find there. But guys, that gets me wondering, is there another connection with these two companies, Morgan Stanley and Harvest Capital Credit, who finally did merge with Portman Ridge Finance Corporation. Are there more clues within clues that could be pointing us in this direction? I guess we'll have to just keep an eye out and see, but that's just my opinion. I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.